So let's go ahead and put together the whole structure for our SQLite database here. Now, because we want to make sure that our code is well done, meaning that we are separating our classes around, making sure that that model view controller architecture is also being used here, I'm going to go ahead and create those packages. So I'm going to say new. This is going to be a package. The first one is just going to be, I'm going to put all of them, even though we're not going to use some of them. UI for user interface. This is going to be data for data classes that represent an entity of some sort. I'm going to say util and I'm going to say model like that. Okay, you can add a few others, but these are the most important ones. Very good. So in this case here, even though we have our activity main XML here, as you very well know, the moment we create any project, that's what's given to us. We're not going to be using the user interface for this project here because I want to focus on understanding the ins and outs of creating this entire infrastructure for SQLite database in Android. So we're not going to be focusing on this at all. So I can just leave as it is. In fact, I can just get rid of that altogether. All right. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and create a model because we are going to create a model that will represent one contact. Okay. So I'm going to say new Java class. I'm going to call this contact. Okay, very good. So this contact is going to be very simple. I'm going to have a few instance variables here. So first one is going to be ID, int ID, like that. Say private string name, because a contact must have a name. Private string phone number. Now, there's a reason why I'm putting a phone number as a string here, just to simplify our life. Obviously, phone number would probably have different types and so forth, mostly integer, but this works for us. Okay, this is a very simple model class contact here. So we're just going to have a name and a phone number. That's it. So what are we doing here? We're actually going to mimic something like this. So tables internally in database, they are created like this, right? So we're going to have ID, which is what I've added here id there is a name and there is a phone number so these are the columns right this column id these ids as we enter as we add items as we add contacts to our database they will be automatically incremented that way for each entry we're going to have a unique id so that is very important for the integrity of our data because you can imagine if we have the same ids that means every time i want to get paul ID2, I could also end up getting James if James also has ID2. So this is automatically done for us with the SQLite classes and so forth, which we're going to be seeing soon, right? And then we're going to have the name field. So again, column, which will add strings name and a phone number. We're just going to add strings as well, but there will be our phone numbers. So that is the representation of a table internally in a database. All right, so let's go keep going here. So we have that. Let's go ahead and create a constructor. So first of all, I'm going to create a full constructor there. But also, I want to make sure that I have the possibility of not having to instantiate or pass all of those parameters when I want to create a new object of type contact, right? So I'm going to pass in an empty constructor there as well. And while we're here, we're going to go ahead and create getters and setters like that. Very good. That looks really nice. All right, so now we have our model class here, which represents one contact. Very good, so we don't need to look at it anymore. The next thing we need to do here is to create an actual database class. Now, because we are always wanting to separate our code, I'm gonna actually create a class called database handler here instead of a data. Let's say new Java class. And this class here is gonna be called database handler. So what this class will do, it will just handle all of the things that a database does. So a database does very simple things, really, if you think about it. So the basics of what a database can do, and of course, within these basics, you can also see other things that can be done, but the basics are very simple. So database does what we call CRUD. CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete. That's it. That's what a database do. So we're going to put all of those functionalities, all of these things that database do inside of one class. That way we don't have to keep creating things all over the places in our activities and so forth. So this is how you should always create your databases. Now, the beauty here, as you will see, once we are done with this class, you will see that you can always take the same class. And whenever you're creating a project on your own that handles database, you can just go ahead and use the same class and just change a few things, of course, the names of database and so forth. But at least you have a plan. You have some sort of a blueprint you can follow. 
All right, so now this class here is going to extend something. So I'm going to say here, super class is going to be SQL light opener, SQL light open helper like that. Now we need this class, meaning in this case, we're going to be extending. So database handle will extend SQL light open helper, because we want to make sure that we don't have to do all the work ourselves. Because remember, Android has this database system inside of it. And we have a way to leverage the classes leverage all of the functionalities already, as you can see here, right? So we are going to use what we already have. So let's go ahead and hit enter. So there we go. We are invoking the super class, meaning we're going to be extending our database handle like that. Say okay, and voila, we have our class which extends SQLite. Now SQLite here, as you can see, it has other things that it needs to actually be implementing, right? So I'm just going to go ahead here and say make implement methods, and we're just going to say okay. So all of them are there, but we still have a little problem here because we needed to actually pass a constructor. Okay, I'm going to just pass the first constructor at the top here because we're going to change it doesn't matter really. There we go. So at this point, what are we going to do? I'm going to just actually get rid of all of this inside. Just get rid of all of that stuff inside there. And I'm going to add something myself. So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and I have to pass context to say context like that. And I'm going to pass our name. So it's going to be string name. And let's pass our SQLite database that cursor factory call this factory. And I'm going to pass int version here. Okay, so we don't need this error handler. So this is all good. Okay, so I had to do some restructuring here. But what we're saying here, as you should know, by now, this database handler constructor, we're just going to be able to pass the context, the string name here, that's going to be the name of the database that we're creating, right. And we have this cursor factory, which is not going to be using at all. But we also have this int version here. All right, so that's where we pass into super so things are set up. So at this point here, we are okay for our database handler. The next thing we're going to do actually is we're going to create another class inside of our util, which will have some static instance variables. That way we can reference them inside of our database handler here. Because like I said, in order for us to create our database, we need to pass the name because the system has to know what are you going to name the database and also the version and other things that is not very interesting to us at this point. So let's go to our util here. I'm going to say new Java class. And this is going to just be called util class, okay, for utilities. So here, I'm going to put some database related items that we can reference. So I'm going to make this private static final variable. So if you say PSF, you can create an integer, you can create an int or a string, right? So that's very handy. Hit enter. Now we can give it a name. Now because this is going to be a static final, meaning it will never change. That's why we say static and final never changes. It is customary in Java to make any static variable or instance variable to be uppercase to differentiate it from a normal variable or instance variable. So in this case here, I'm going to put an int for our database version. So I'm going to say caps, just say database underscore version. And we want it to be version one. Okay, so every database needs to have a version. Hence, we have to pass this version when we create our database. Okay, let's go back here. And we're going to do the same thing for others. So P S F, this time is going to be a string, and what I'm going to do, I need a database name, like I said, so database name, and we can give a name that we want. In this case, I'm just going to give this name contact underscore DB. Okay, PSF, it's going to be another string. And this time I'm going to give a name to our table. So I'm going to say table just to make sure that there is differentiation here, name. So this is going to be our table name. So let's see what's happening here. Okay, so we need to have a database version because that's what it's needed for our database handler when we invoke our constructor to create a database, right. But we also need to pass a name for our database. That makes sense, right? A database, as you should know by now, is an entity that allows you to create tables inside of the database, you can create as many tables as you want. And then once you have all those tables, you can relate them. That's why we call a relational database. Okay. In this case, we have one database with just one table, but you can have as many tables as you want. 
that's the reason why we're creating the static final names and all of these names that we're going to be using throughout our entire application. That way, it's easier for us to come down here and change just in one place. Let's say you want to change the database version, you just come here and change it as opposed to if we had written this database version inside of our database handler constructor here, every time we have to come here and change it. But if your application is growing, that's not very good because then you ended up having a lot of issues. So it's always a good idea to create an util class that has all of your variables, all of your the small pieces of data that if you wanted to change it at some point, you just come to one place, change it, and the whole application will know of that change. Okay, so let's go put a table name here. Uh, let's call this contacts like that. Okay, there we go. And now we're going to create our contacts table columns names. So to create a table, we have to have our what? Our column name. So these are the column names because these are column, column, column. So ID would be a column name name this is a column name phone this is a column name so we are creating this structure now of our table which is going to be inside of our database all right so this point here come down here do the same thing first of all we're going to have the id right this column name id here very simply I'm going to say key underscore id as such is equal to just say id okay in this case, we're going to create a key name, say key underscore name. And the naming is very important because you don't want to mix and match because that will create a lot of headaches later. So I'm going to say name. And last but not least, we're going to create a key phone number as such. And we just call this phone underscore number. Very good. So there we go. Very good. So now that we have this util class here, in next videos, we will then be able to invoke this util class, util dot get database version and just get one. If you want to get database name, we just get contact and so forth. So this is much better and in line with what we want to do as developers. All right. So I'll see you in the next video.